What up, y'all? I'm Alex Poole, owner and head strength and conditioning coach of AP Performance Training here in Houston, Texas. Mornings. Uh, being a gym owner in the mornings is <laughs> early. Um, up 4.45 every morning uh, and trying to plan out your whole day. And then, well, you know, once you get here, man, it's lights on and it's, it's game time. As soon as you walk in the building, like, you got to be ready to go. All right, now I can break that shit. How you, see, how you, how you figure that I can't? Cause you, I mean, just because you never seen me do something, only I can't do it. You get the vibe. You do know I'm Jamaican, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially in the mornings. Because, you know, that's, that's the most vulnerable time for some people. You know, because you're up. You got all these thoughts in your head. But once you walk in here, all that shit is out the window. different is the attention to detail. When people see the workouts and they do the workouts, they don't realize that a lot of this stuff is science-based. You know, like it's it's quality work. Squat, holding it just like that. That's the Zercha squat. So you got four sets of 10, and then you're gonna do the reverse lunge. So with my adults, you know, they're grouped up into their own category. You know, I call it my corporate athletes. We do a lot of, we do a lot of strength training. We do a lot of hit training, but they're, they're functional movements. You know, like I focus on mobility in certain types of squats. With my entrepreneurs, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more relaxed and understanding. You know, sometimes you get clients in here and, you know, they busting their ass, but got to take a call. Or, you know, I have to respond to a message, you know, and I'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to that because it's what I am. It's how I started. You know, I always got to check my phone, always got to check my phone. But it's like I tell everybody, I just want to work. You know, no one in here is on a time limit as far as, okay, sessions are 45 minutes. Like, nah, man, we just want to work. I just want to work. Like, I'm not really concerned with how long it takes, but I just want the work. <laughs> Elbows out. He's going to take a call quick. <laughs> There you go, all the way down. But the biggest thing is, bro, I'm cool, man. Like, like I'm just real personable, man. Like, you know, those athletes want to be around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know my background as being an athlete, you know, so they want to be around that. They respect athletes. Athletes respect athletes. You know, and that's the biggest thing that separates me from some people. Is sometimes it's not about the names that you train, but how you are with these people. Either you, you crazy or you're not. No, there's definitely levels. What's the levels of crazy? There's different levels of crazy. All right, so what's your level of crazy on a scale of one to five? So I tell them, you know, you know, I'm a trainer when it comes to my adult clients. You know, I'm a trainer, I'm this. But when it comes to my athletes, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. You know, and strength and conditioning means not only physically, but mentally. You know, like I'm gonna train their minds to be stronger, you know what I'm saying? As well as getting their body stronger. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna condition the body and condition the mind, but the way I do it is always through positive reinforcement. You know, like I'm not a rah-rah person where I'm yelling and cursing out kids because I want to, to genuinely love being in here and getting better. You know, and the way I do that is by conditioning the mind. This started in college, honestly, man. I was uh, I was training people when I was in college. You know, in the spring, during the spring, because, you know, all we have is spring workouts, spring football or whatever in college. You know, I was training the girls on campus. You know, they would always ask me, could they work out? Or would I train them? Would I train them? I didn't know what the hell I was doing, man. Like, I'm like, all right, man, come to the gym, work out, we do some stuff. Um, and... 
it really like the bait, the core of it, honestly. So I was in school and I wanted to be an attorney. I wanted to practice law when I first got to college. And when I first got there, I was like buck 65. You know, I'm on a division one scholarship. I'm buck 65. And I remember just getting abused in practice because I was so undersized. I didn't lift weights. I didn't work out like that. I just thought it was going to be like high school. You know, I was going to be good in college. And, you know, once I got into the strength conditioning program, you know, at the college level, you know, I gained 20 pounds first year, first semester, like just of muscle. And like I got faster, but then I was more explosive. And I wanted to know why, like, how, how, did, how does that happen? And I switched majors. Like I went from poli sci to exercise science because I wanted to understand it. And um, so, you know, once I finished, once I finished undergrad, I went to grad school at TSU and I was a, a human performance major, you know? And during that time, I had got a job as a volleyball strength and conditioning coach. So, you know, that's kind of how I feel in the volleyball. And, uh, you know, they didn't have a head strength conditioning guy over the whole program. So that volleyball team was mine. Like, I didn't have to check in with anyone. So, you know, it was up to me to be like, okay, you know, I have to come up with a program that's going to get these girls to be successful at this level. So, you know, I transitioned from there and I, uh, I started teaching and I took an unpaid internship. I took an unpaid internship for this company. Um, and you know they knew my background, so they knew I was they knew I was experienced. They knew I could do it, and they they gave me the pro group. So I had the professional baseball players, you know, threw me right in because they knew I had the experience. They knew I could do it. They knew I understood what I was doing. But you know it was a huge task to you know here I am and I'm training 20 millionaires, you know, that play at the highest level, you know, and it was to the point to where they only wanted to work out with me. You know, they only wanted to train with me. And it wasn't even my program that I was running. You know, it was the company's program. But that's when I knew, like, okay, I'm good with people. You know, I'm real, I'm very personal, I'm good with people. And I felt, I felt it was time for me to step out on my own, you know, and do my own thing. So, like, four years ago, I had decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna open up my own spot. Uh, no clients. You know, no leads, none of that. Um, I had leased out this 2,000 square foot space inside a volleyball club. You know, and I, you know, convinced them, hey, you know, this could be beneficial to your club athletes and to the surrounding area. Uh, this is how I can help them. And, you know, they took a chance on me, let me lease out the space. Uh, and I turn it into a gym. Because you're using, right? So if I'm coming up right here, mm -hmm. now I'm using my biceps. I'm trying to use momentum, dog. I'm not really hitting them lats like I'm supposed to, as opposed to me leaning over and isolating them lats like that. And then rowing, and rowing, squeeze, squeeze. You know, and I, I realized, like, you know, my dad has been in business his whole life, had his own business his whole life. You know, and I, I kind of realized that I was his son, basically, of like, you know, I want to be able to call the shots. I want to be able to create something and direct it and run it myself, you know, and and not have to answer to someone, you know. Now on the flip side of that, man, it's hard because you know it's some other details that go behind the scenes of you know running your own business. But I I felt I was prepared for it. This is Chris. Hey, what's up, Chris? It's Alex. Alex, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, um, quick uh, quick request on the uh, the invoice, because I might need you to send me another one. Yeah. Uh, we had the five assault bikes on there. Yeah. I'm gonna do three, because I already have the three right now. Okay. That way I can make it you know, even number six. I already got the three, so I'll have six assault bikes. But I know I got the three uh, curved treadmills on there, so I'm gonna keep that the same. Okay. Uh, the only thing that I'm gonna get with you on, uh, and I'm trying to find out by today, is just the color of the uh like the squat racks and stuff like that because i'm trying to think if i want to do that black and red or that blue and black some details that you can't expect on in the gym long hours long hours 
you know, when I first started, I would be at the gym 14 hours, 14, 15 hours at, at one point, you know. And sometimes it would be three hours, three, four hours before I even had a client in there. But you, I just didn't want to leave the gym because a potential person can walk by and inquire about it, you know. So I had to just be there. So it's, man, it's long hours, man. That's some stuff that you can expect. That's, that's just what it's going to be. Also, man, it's going to be, you got to be willing to sacrifice, man. Like, you got to be willing to, you know, sometimes you got to take those finances and, and invest in equipment. So, yeah, just uh, understanding, man, that you're going to take a hit financially starting out like you are. You know, it's not all sunshine and roses. But the most important thing, you know, is client retention. Oh, happy Gilmore. My fingers hurt. <laughs> It was like, oh, your fingers hurt. Now your back's gonna be hurting. Three rounds. Now, remember, this shit is done at your level of fitness. All right? So don't sell out and have a heart attack. Because <laughs> you, all right, so we're gonna do one shuttle run. Uh, with the private gym, it's a lot more personal. Like, you get me. Like, you get me, you, you get all of me. You know what I'm saying? You don't get, you know, part of me because I got somebody else that comes in. You know, and you get to establish that relationship. You know, just, and trainers can tell you, man, like we know a lot about people, you know. It's, uh, it's a very personal job where sometimes you know a lot of personal stuff about people, just some deep stuff about people sometimes, you know, and sometimes you gotta be there emotionally for, for your clients, you know, and then I would just tell people like, imagine getting that at a corporate gym from who? Hi, ain't you? No, I That's cap. To... That's cap. I did it. That's good. Did you eat today? See, I made me <laughs> pop you in the back of the. Uh, I'm really big on community, you know. So in my gym, you know, all my clients know each other. You know, they introduce each other to each other. Um, I've, you know, I've seen like close friendships, you know, that it that have started in in this setting because it's personal. You know, it's smaller. You can communicate with each other. I said you can network in here, you know. Corporate gym, everyone has their headphones on. You know, so everyone's in their own world. But you know, in here it's more personal. You know, that's the biggest thing, man. It's like, you know, if you're looking for somewhere that's personal, that like can cater to you, then a private gym is where you should be. Whereas with the corporate gym, if you just wanna work out and, you know, do what you do, you can do that. But also in a private gym you can do it here too. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. So, hey, Nick, look at Mary's hands. Wait, no, this one's broken. Don't they look like chicken paws? <laughs> Don't they look like chicken paws? They long as fuck, though, but like your palm not no, big. My first workout with you ever, like three years ago, made me palm a... Yes, them shit's long as fuck. The palm the volleyball. You can palm a basketball. To being more out in the light, more open about what I'm doing. So for a long time, I, you know, I'm on social media, but like I, I never really advertised on social media. You know, I've built this business through word of mouth, you know, and you know, it's, it's grown to the point to where, you know, I want people to know me, you know, not necessarily for the business, you know, to get more people, obviously everyone wants more clients, but just because I want people to know like, you know, hey, I'm here, I'm dope at what I do. I'm dope as fuck at what I do, you know, and here's another option for you, you know, and that's that's the biggest thing, man, is is it's time for people to know about me. Cause you know, I've quietly been building this business and it's grown every year, you know, and I feel like I would be doing people a disservice if I didn't give myself to them and like let people see who I am, man. Like like, you know, everybody that knows me know, man, when we in the gym, we clowning, we have a good time, you know what I'm saying? But we gonna get that work. We gonna get that work. Step out on faith. Step out on faith. Uh, I can tell you every situation that I went through doing this, but it still may not be what you go through. You know, you, you know, it's, uh, Nipsey said it best when he said, you know, I'm not going to lie and portray, you know, like I'm just this person that exudes, you know, just ultimate poise. Like, you know, the difference is I didn't give up. 
and I really didn't. You know, it's been like, it's gonna be tough times, man. You know, finance is gonna get thin, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to make decisions, but just don't quit. Like, do not quit because like, it's going to happen for you. You know, like, the proof is in the consistency. Like, it's gonna happen. Just don't quit, but always don't act like you know it all. You know, constantly strive and try to learn. Try to learn as much as you can, you know, and, and take what you can take what you can apply, throw out the rest, and then make it into your own style. Like that's my style of training. You know, my style of training was over years of learning and like being trained as an athlete and being trained just in general fitness, you know, and studying and going to school for all of this, you know. You know, bachelor's in, in exercise science, master's in human performance, you know, two years done of a PhD in kinesiology, like, like all of that knowledge and then all of my experiences that I had, you know, I pulled from those and I threw out what I didn't like or feel like I didn't need and I made it into my own style and as an owner, that's what you have to do. Like pull inspiration from everybody. Don't get in this business to compete. Like do not compete. Like I'm not, I'm only in competition with three people and I'll be honest with you. Like the three people I'm in competition is me, myself and I, that's it, right? If I can be better than them three dudes, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right.